first and foremost is about a woman's journey on learning shame. It's about, you know, learning what works for you, unlearning all the things that no longer serve you. And it's a really complicated journey. I think a lot of women can relate to that. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and my first question is sort of a big one, but I feel like, um, it's probably something that y'all have been thinking about for a while, especially, you know, writing this film. What have been both your experiences learning about sex from film and television growing up? Wow. Well, the times I was allowed to watch it, <laughs> but let's start there is that I don't feel like I was actually ever really like very seldom exposed to sex, um, especially in a way where a woman was empowered. I, I don't even yeah. think I can recall a single time that I've ever seen that uh, growing up. Um, usually also, like women were never centered in those. Right. Exactly. It was usually about the male experience totally. coming of age. So growing up, I was never allowed to really watch that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I did somehow watch it, it was always very like the stakes are super high for the woman. It's super uncomfortable. It really hurt. It's really like she's really shy and uncomfortable with her body. And the dude is like the I'm um, super cool. And like, this is about me. So they con the very concept of like a woman being able to enjoy sex, honestly, very recently learned in adulthood that like that could even be a choice that women make, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, similarly, I mean, I just like I grew up watching so many movies, but I just never saw anything really relevant for me because there were very few women, you know, who were protagonists, especially in like the 80s and 90s, you know, teen kind of high school movies. Um, even in like inspiring substitute teacher movies, there's very few women, um, let alone diverse women. So I just didn't have a lot of movies um, to to look to. They just weren't like, you know, I wasn't being reflected in these movies, I just didn't have access because mm -hmm. um, they just didn't exist. So that's why it was so exciting to make this movie with Lily because for me, she is like a really ideal leading lady because she's both funny and diverse and has a lot of heart. So yeah, it just like those movies just didn't exist. That's why we have to make them <laughs> so that there's there's new people to connect to. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I honestly think about this all the time, maybe more than I should, but it's like insane to me um, what we were sort of exposed to and then not exposed to growing up that really imprinted on us and really, um, you know, it impacted the way we move through the world. It's all so connected. And so what I see when I hear about films like yours, I just feel grateful, grateful, grateful because I have a 16 year old niece. And then knowing now that she can watch movies like this, I just feel it's just, I mean, I don't think there's anything more special than that. Yeah, I was also going to say, you know, I feel like, well, let me first start by saying I do not have children. So this is coming from someone who does not have children. But I do feel like a lot of parents, you know, even as we've been doing panels and interviews, a lot of people are like, talking to your kids about sex is very difficult. Like, do you have any advice? I, I don't have kids, but I will say that what I do know is, from experience, kids will find a way to learn about things, whether you talk to them about it or not. Um, we live in a day and age now where like there's no sheltering your kid from things. I'm sorry to say it is true. There's the Internet. There's your friends. They're going to they're going to learn from somewhere. This is the type of film. I mean, sure, it's a sex comedy, but this is the type of film I actually if I had kids that were teenagers, I would want them to see this film, actually, um, because, yeah, it's got raunchy sex jokes. But like I'd want my daughter to learn that it's completely fine to make choices that suit you and it's completely fine to um, learn things that very often people you love and who care about you taught you you know Absolutely. some of the most damaging things that a lot of women carry with them are to them from their parents from their from their community from their friends from their siblings and so i would want my teenager to see this movie personally i don't know if you, you totally that, Same. But i mean it would have it just would have felt so inclusive to have this as a teen i would have felt so spoken to mm -hmm. um and so even absolutely. sorry i won't even interrupt you not even as a teen but like I think people my age, this yeah. movie is really important for them. So I would say I would want my teenagers to see this. I would want, if I had older kids, I'd want them to see this. I just think this is such an important like movie. Like our mom. Like this is gonna be yes, I want my mom. Time. I, mean, hey. I want like, my mom, I think, will be positively impacted yeah. by this movie. Ditto. You know? Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, I think it's like people of all ages. I think that it's like, I think we need to start normalizing both talking about sex with like young girls and to your point, like older generations. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's so important and, and it's, it's, it's essential to like, not carry that, that generational shame that's been so instilled in us. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. And I think too, let's talk about humor being a huge part in normalizing and destigmatizing all of this stuff. I mean, y'all wrote this together. You collaborated on this together. I'm sure you make each other laugh, like just as friends and people in this world, but what did the humor play in just creating that safe environment to even start diving into these topics that can feel personal, but, and you know, all of that. Yes, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, from a really young age, I feel like I learned and understood how to use comedy as protection, honestly, as a shield, as a tool. It's, it's the best vehicle to address taboo subjects. Um, I have used it to talk about mental health, talk about sex, talk about all types of things. And I think it allows you to have these conversations that are otherwise uncomfortable. For me, even on set, I'll speak to like, there were some scenes where I was like, oh man, I'm really nervous about shooting this scene. I, I'm gonna step super in my comfort zone. And I would have that energy walking onto set where I was like, we're not rolling yet, but I'm gonna use comedy starting now. So like, I would walk onto the set, start joking with the crew to be like, all right, well, I had to practice last night. So I guess we'll do it. Like in comedy, I even used it then to be like, it's gonna be my friend as we progress and, and move move through these scenes. But um, I've always believed that comedy is the best way to have tough conversations because it lowers defense mechanisms it makes every it kind of it evens the playing field and um it just opens people up it opens up hearts and minds and allows culture to change yeah same i mean i grew up in a family where we used humor to survive we you know in the face of like really intense drama my family just retained their sense of humor and like we were always joking around and i think really humor is like the art of survival in the way i grew up it's such a um, important value for me um and it's just such a great way to connect. I think I, on a panel at South by, I heard Esther Perel say something really amazing about humor. She said, comedy and humor is as close to, as you can get to anyone else without touching them. Yeah, I heard the same Did thing. I remember, yes. And I was like, oh my God, that's so good. I was like, that's so good. Because it's true. <laughs> it's so it true. Is so true. Yeah, it was yes. such a great... Um, it was such a, it was so beautifully rendered. Um, but yeah, and I, I, I think this movie was such a dream. And I remember one day shooting with Lily and I just looked over at her because we have such an amazing cast. We have uh, Stephanie Beatrice and Sabrina Jolies. We have all, and, and uh, Mary Pollock. Pollock. Yep. We have like these amazing female comedians. There's so much diversity. There's so much like female empowerment. And I just looked over in the teacher's lounge and I was like, this is like a dream that we're all at the helm and we're making this movie together together and it's such a it was just like I was like my teenage self would be so happy for me right now just that to be surrounded by all of these women and to be able to make movies with them um so it was yeah it was just such a unique and um dream experience it's it sounds like it's really healing for the inner child, I think. And like it and is. So we can sort of heal a lot of my inner child. Same, and yes. doing that together. And I mean, that's, I think that you, you just said it, Sarah, empowerment. Like, I think when we hear that word, that is what it is, right? It's like coming together to have this like shared experience where you can sort of reflect and, and, you know, and have that moment for yourself and for others. And it's really special. It's so special. Um, and also I love Esther. She's, She's the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> I need to figure out how to um, listen to that panel. Um, but talk to me too about making Maya virgin, which I think, I mean, it's just so smart um, and sort of using that as a way to kind of also like talk about the absurdity that is like sex education in this country. Um, I mean, we could rattle off stats. It's just atrocious and um, how it's not prioritized and, and yeah, talk to me through that kind of very smart choice. I mean, I, cause I mean, we both connected because we were like, our sex education was like my, it was my gym teacher showing us a video about childbirth or handing out pamphlets about venereal diseases. It was just all like fear tactics. There mm -hmm. wasn't a lot of information. I couldn't get any information at home because I was like, you know, my parents, like we couldn't talk about these, um, these issues. So I think, you know, the, the movie motivates is trying to motivate people to have more open conversations about sex and sexuality, because when there is more open conversation, it's just, it's beneficial for everyone. It, there's more personal growth. There's more personal development. Like it's just a good thing. So I think that's, uh, you know, sort of the, the goal of the movie. Totally. And I think in terms of my being a virgin, like uh, it had to be that way for me personally, because you know, we've talked about this a lot, but 
generally, historically, virgins have always been the butt of the joke. And it's something is wrong with you or it's something to be fixed. And I think the journey Maya goes on this in this film is challenging that. Is 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 really, you know, every time we see or hear jokes about virgins and sex comedies, it's always about like, okay, now you're okay because you lost your virginity. You're like, how do we fix it? And I think we want to say that like, it should be a woman's choice and it's, it doesn't have to do with age and we're all on this journey together. And I wanted to normalize that, especially growing up in South Asian culture, um, feeling so much pressure around that. I was like, I want to normalize that. Like people can be older and maybe it's not their time, you know, and I don't want it to be the butt of a joke. I want it to be a very empowered choice. And so um, honestly, I think that's the thing people connect with a lot in the movie. I mean, we mm. we tested it a few times and the number one thing people told me at those test screens are like, I really saw myself in this character and in a way that I, I've been embarrassed about for a long time. And any other movie I watched growing up made me feel bad about it. And like, this is the first time I've seen this represented, you know? Absolutely. I know I've thought about that a lot because um, Peggy Ornstein has this great book called Girls and Sex. I don't know if you guys have read it, but it's awesome. And she has a huge chapter in there about virginity and about how it's like what even is virginity it's also that's another thing it's also you know i, I used to be a line uh, the movie. literally i was <laughs> just thinking about that like it's a line in the movie but i don't actually know if it I is did we got it damn it but it was, but a, it line. was a line about like what virginity except for some like hetero construct yeah. that people made up like you know what i mean right. so totally. right was that oh. I, I know because I feel it? like I yeah I think we keep Damn that it. line it up. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I remember we added it. I was like, it has to be yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. But yes, that crossed our mind. Yes, <laughs> but so sure. it's so crazy. Like we, I, I did this podcast episode about like virginity and film, and and it was so I did kind of this deep dive, and it's again wild to kind of look back and see what's been represented and what's not been um and and the again the damage i think like to your point lily it's like and sarah you were saying it about with sex education or getting the information from home or even from like medical like professionals it's all very clinical it's it's kind of emotionless and so we're left to kind of go to the places that we always go to find truth which is on the screen which is in you know books whatever in art and um and that's why i think this is so so crucial because um storytelling that's that's it right it's the power to create change to create conversation to educate um because it's not being done in other places um, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested in like having those discussions with people once this film comes out about virginity, about like female pleasure, about all yeah. of it. And I think too, like the idea that we've seen it primarily through all of this done through the patriarchal lens is just for over a century now, um, is just atrocious. And so I think I'm just, I'm so excited and I'm so grateful, 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 um, that y'all made this film and that, and all the work that you continue to do on and off the screen. It's just, um, it's so inspiring. Thank you. No, we will. We're so glad that you feel that way. And we, we agree. I think more than anything, I can't wait to hear the discussions that come out of this film because I think, you know, it is a sex comedy. There might be some people that are like, oh my, this is a little, I don't know if I'm okay, but I think that's the point. It's to start the discussion and and question why uh, a sexually empowered woman would be a problem. Exactly, would be uncomfortable or whatever it is. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, it's good edutainment, totally. It's not... Hard, it's not like hitting you over the head. It's right. like really entertaining. Right. It's a solid movie, but it is edutainment at the same time. That's a, it's a sneaky that way. It's sneaky that way. You're like, <laughs> you go, oh, I'm actually like, just, it's like almost like your body starts to relax and you go, oh, I'm having a good time. Right. <laughs> I can actually like admit these things to myself or have those like either, you know, inner conversations with myself. Um, and so that's really cool. But I'm going to let y'all go. I know you're so, so busy. So thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I really thank you so much for putting on this professional interview where there's a beer keg being um, passed behind <laughs> us. That guy. I'm like, what's he doing? Yeah. <laughs>